Thank you all for listening and watching my videos, please subscribe and like my channel Master Coolits. Hoping that you will not skip my ads, it's a big help for me by not skipping it, thank you so much. Dragon Shadow. The Rise. Elora's composure finally crumbled. Tears cascaded down her cheeks like a string of broken pearls. Her attempts to hold them back futile. She gritted her teeth, desperately trying to maintain control. But a heart-wrenching sob escaped her lips. With a sudden deep breath, Elora attempted to regain her calm demeanor. I'm begging you, Zane. You can't defeat Kai and Madame Tina. It's... it's impossible. Her voice broke, thick with emotion. Her beautiful face, etched with anguish, could melt the hardest of hearts. Zane's heart ached at the sight, but a spark of realization ignited within him alongside the pain. Her words had just confirmed his suspicions. Hear that? Your precious goddess knows what's up. You can't touch me. My mom's an elder of the five spirit sex. She's a cultivator at the expert level. What have you got against that, huh? Now that I know who I'm up against, I'm actually relieved. Zane's gaze softened as he looked at Alora, his voice gentle yet resolute. Don't worry, Alora. I'll take care of everything and everyone standing in our way. Just watch me. With a wave of his hand, Zane summoned his Black Abyss sword. The imposing weapon materialized, its dark blade gleaming ominously. Zane advanced towards Kai, each step causing the palace to shudder. The air grew thick with tension as if a slumbering dragon was awakening. Despite being only at the eighth stage of the intermediate level, Zane's strength far surpassed that of the other stars of ten palaces. Wind Serpent Step. A gentle breeze caressed Zane's form, and in an instant, he vanished, his body merging seamlessly with the wind itself. The power of wind. Zane had not only reached the level of major completion, but surpassed it. Startled, Kai's eyes darted around frantically, searching for his opponent. But in that split second of confusion, a dark shadow flashed past him. With surgical precision, Zane's attack severed the hand clutching Alora's arm. The cut was clean, blood gushing forth like a macabre spring. Ah! My hand! You... you actually did it? Zane! You're dead meat! Kai Rivers was Madame Tina's son and had always believed himself untouchable. Zane had shattered that illusion in the most brutal way possible. Zane, stop it! You can't do this! Alora's frantic attempt to intervene came too late. Zane's eyes burned with unwavering resolve, his movements a blur of deadly grace. In the span of a single breath, Zane unleashed dozens of strikes, each one perfectly aimed to end his opponent's life. The power of wind amplified his already formidable speed to inhuman levels. Damn you! Why don't you die? Pushed to the brink of madness, Kai erupted in flames, channeling the full might of his firepower. Above his head, a majestic fire dragon materialized, its scales gleaming in the inferno's light. The temperature in the hall skyrocketed, the very air shimmering with heat. Anyone who dares touch me dies. I'll kill you all. With a deafening roar, the fire dragon lunged at Zane, fangs bared and claws extended. But Zane didn't even flinch. Zane unleashed a torrent of vital energy from his sword. Sharp sword energy danced through the air, forming a devastating wave that crashed against the fire dragon, extinguishing its flames in an instant. This... this is impossible! It can't be! Not everyone plays by your rules! Now die! His sword became a blur of motion, targeting Kai's waist. In a heartbeat, the sword's shadow danced across Kai's body, reducing him to thousands of bloody pieces. A grisly rain of blood and flesh fell from the air, painting Zane's body crimson. The spectators stood frozen in shock, their minds struggling to process the brutal scene before them. Elora, in particular, seemed unable to close her mouth, her eyes wide with disbelief. Why? Why did you kill him? Do you have any idea what you've done? I know exactly what I've done. If I didn't stop him, you'd be taken away by him and his mother. But that's not happening on my watch. Zane put away his sword and walked up to Elora, enveloping her in a gentle embrace. Despite her recent cold treatment, Zane's trust and tenderness towards Elora remained unwavering. In Zane's arms, Elora felt a warmth and security she'd never experienced before. The tension slowly drained from her body. 
What's done is done. Here, take this. You might need it. Alora produced a palm-sized piece of golden soil, its surface shimmering with an astonishing amount of elemental essence and vital energy. Oh my god, that's an innate spirit treasure. The magic soil. How'd you get your hands on that? The sharp-eyed members of the Great Eastern Palm immediately recognized the extraordinary nature of this soil, their eyes glinting with barely concealed greed. However, the gruesome fate of Kai Rivers served as a potent deterrent against any rash actions. This soil was renowned as the ultimate nourishment for spiritual plants and grasses. Its value was astronomical, easily worth tens of millions of crystals. More importantly, it wasn't something that could be simply purchased. It could only be discovered by the most fortunate of cultivators. Why are you giving this to me? Where'd you get it? This is what Kai and I came here for. If you have it, maybe it'll keep Madame Tina off our backs. For a while. Zane accepted the magic soul without further questions, tucking it away safely. Elora, we're in this together now. Whatever comes our way, we'll face it side by side. Are you crazy? Zane, you've killed Madame Tina's son. How can we possibly stand against an expert level cultivator? The sound of a bell echoed through the Sky Shadow secret level, signaling that it was time to depart. Zane took Alora's hand, refusing to let go for even a moment, fearing she might try to slip away again. Alora's reaction to this gesture was a mix of conflicting emotions, a blend of happiness and sorrow that she couldn't quite reconcile. The group exited the palace, entering a space channel without delay. As they traversed the tunnel, Elora seized a moment to approach Eric. Eric, listen. I know you and Zane are like brothers. If he ever faces an enemy he can't beat, you have to get him out of there. Promise me. Her words left Eric confused and uneasy, a sense of foreboding settling in his gut. Wait, are you... are you planning to... <laughs> Elora nodded, her beautiful eyes dulled with resignation. Shu knows Zane. He'd turn the world upside down to find you. I know, but it's the only way to keep him safe. If you're truly his friend, you'll do this for me. But Zane, he won't like this. Eric frowned, torn between his loyalty to Zane and the gravity of Alora's request. All right, I promise. But I hope you know what you're doing. Though he might not fully understand her reasons, Eric recognized the depth of Elora's sacrifice. If she was willing to go to such lengths, the least he could do was honor this request. Thank you, Eric. You don't know how much this means. Elora's voice was tinged with sadness, the weight of her decision evident in every word. Indeed. Hey, what's the holdup? The passage is clear. We can head out now. Zane had shouted at two of them after checking the space channel. Yeah, coming. Eric turned to Alora, his expression a mix of concern and resignation. Shall we? As they entered the space channel, the world around them blurred and shifted. In the blink of an eye, they found themselves back in the familiar expanse of the Seven Stars grassland. But the scene that greeted them was far from what they expected. The anticipated carnage of a half-year war was nowhere to be seen. No bodies littered the ground, and no rivers of blood flowed. The battlefield was eerily calm, devoid of even the faintest scent of gunpowder or blood. Both the Great Eastern Palm Contingent and the Seven Kingdoms Alliance members emerged from the secret land together, their surviving great generals looking equally perplexed. What's going on here? Is the war over already? No way, we've only been gone half a year. It couldn't have ended that quickly. Maybe this area's off-limits because it's the entrance to the Sky Shadow Secret Land. Both armies might have agreed to keep it neutral. Suddenly the atmosphere shifted. The Great Eastern Palm Group, led by David Sullivan, turned to face Zane and his companions, their expressions hardening. Well, now that we're out of the Secret Land, should we get down to business? David's gaze flicked between Zane and Caleb, clearly weighing his options. The unspoken truth hung heavy in the air. Outside the secret land, they were enemies once more. David, are you really planning to attack me? Zane's eyes narrowed, his gaze boring into David with an intensity that made the latter visibly uncomfortable. 
Despite being only at the eighth stage of the intermediate level, Zane's strength now surpassed all others present, with the possible exception of Elora. What happened to him there? His strength, it's off the charts! It must be those celestial life pills. If only I'd known, I'd have risked everything to get them. Regret gnawed at David as he realized the magnitude of the opportunity he missed. Little did he know, Zane's power boost came not from a mere 20 pills, but from over a hundred. Wait, you were never my target. I'm after Caleb Pierce. Caleb, it's time we settled who's truly the strongest among the stars of ten palaces and the seven great generals. Hmm, the strongest? Are we still talking about that? Caleb's gaze shifted to Zane, a mix of admiration and resignation in his eyes. Well, we're enemies now, aren't we? So let's fight. As if on cue, both sides drew their weapons, the air thick with the promise of imminent conflict. Yet a noticeable gap formed around Zane, Elora, and their immediate companions, a testament to their now legendary strength. Elora, let's leave them to it. Why don't we check out what's happening around here? She responded with a silent nod, her hand still firmly in his grasp. Just as the two sides were about to clash, a powerful gust of wind swept across the battlefield. Thick clouds gathered overhead, swirling ominously before parting to reveal a solitary figure. <gasps> it was Thomas, the formidable sect leader of the Five Spirit Sect. His mere presence radiating the power of the advanced level sent shivers of fear through the great Eastern Palm forces. Holy crap! It's an advanced level expert from the Seven Kingdoms Alliance. We're toast, run for it. Fall back, we can't win against him. Citizens of the Great Eastern Palm, please wait, I come in peace. The war between our nations ended three days ago. A peace treaty has been signed. There's no need for an alarm. The war's over? Just like that? Three days ago? But wasn't this supposed to be a years-long conflict? Thomas descended from the sky, his eyes scanning the crowd. His gaze lingered on Zane, a flicker of surprise crossing his face. Then his eyes found Elora, and his brow furrowed slightly before he regained his composure. If you doubt my words, perhaps this will convince you. Thomas held up a golden token, its surface etched with the character's stone. David recognized the origin of the token at a glance and blurted out while being skeptical. That's Master Goldenstone's token, right? Is this really true? The war is over? Indeed it is. I've been ordered to escort you all to the peace negotiation hall. Today is the day both sides formalize the treaty. Madam Tina and Master Goldenstone await your arrival. At the mention of Madam Tina's name, Elora tensed visibly, her grip on Zane's hand tightening. Don't worry, Elora. It'll be okay. Zane stepped forward, addressing Thomas directly. Sec leader, Alora and I have urgent matters to attend to. Please excuse us from this gathering. Upon hearing Zane's words, he frowned, his gaze landing on Elora behind him. He realized that she looked out of sorts. I'm afraid that's not possible, Zane. This isn't just about Madame Tina. All the high-ranking members of the Seven Kingdoms Alliance will be present, including the Great Master of the Five Spirit Sect. Every disciple of our sex is required to attend. It's an order, not a request. Zane's brow furrowed, clearly about to object, when Alora's hand on his sleeve stopped him. It's all right, sect leader. We'll be there. But Alora... Realizing he was outnumbered, Zane reluctantly nodded his assent. With a gesture, Thomas conjured a massive energy construct in the shape of a thick palm. It gently lifted the entire group, whisking them away towards the Peace Negotiation Hall. Peace Negotiation Hall was located in a region known as Sunset Land, which was in the center of the battle between the two armies in the heart of the Eastern Prairie. There stood the hastily constructed Peace Negotiation City. The city, while far from beautiful, was functional, simple and crude in its design, yet capable of housing a multitude of people. At its center, the Peace Negotiation Hall rose, a beacon of hope amidst the ravages of war. The influential figures of both the Seven Kingdoms Alliance and the Great Eastern Palm were gathered in the Peace Negotiation Hall, 
Peace Negotiation Hall was a magnificent palace with gold decorations, which was extremely luxurious. Thomas descended from the sky, bringing with him Zane and the others. They landed in the open space before the magnificent Peace Negotiation Hall, its gold decorations gleaming in the sunlight. Many stairs were built around the open space, and the stairs were full of disciples from both sides. When they saw them, they began to talk about it. Look, it's the stars of 10 palaces and seven great generals from the Great Eastern Palm. But why are there so few of them? And some of those faces, I've never seen them before. Thank the heavens this war is finally over. Any longer and there'd be nothing left of us. Follow me. Thomas led the group through the throng of onlookers and into the peace negotiation hall. The interior was even more opulent than Zane had imagined, divided neatly into two sections, left for the Seven Kingdoms Alliance, right for the Great Eastern Palm. <gasps> Zane's eyes swept the room, counting at least 100 attendees. Most were at the advanced level or higher, with a select few radiating the unmistakable aura of the expert level. Beside Madame Tina sat an elderly man, his long beard cascading down to his belly. His eyes remained closed, yet his presence exuded an aura of immense power. That old man next to Madame Tina, could he be the great master of the Five Spirit Sect? His aura, it's even more potent than hers. Esteemed leaders, I've brought the disciples who entered the Sky Shadow secret land. Thomas bowed to two figures seated at a round table. One was Ethan Wright, a man in his early 40s who radiated the unmistakable power of the expert level. As the current leader of the Seven Kingdoms Alliance, his presence commanded respect. Beside him sat Albert, the general of the Great Eastern Palm, clad in imposing armor. The tension in the air was palpable, especially given the history between Zane and Albert. Not long ago, Zane, along with Brad Rooney and Rebecca, had kidnapped Nectar Blaine, Albert's youngest son, and used him as a bargaining chip. Which one of you is Zane Martell? The disciples at the intermediate level visibly flinched at Albert's powerful voice, their souls seeming to quiver in their bodies. I am. <gasps> Zane stepped forward, his head held high, showing no fear despite facing an expert level cultivator. You're Zane Martell? The one who abducted my son? You really do not love your life, not me. Albert's eyes widened unleashing an indescribable pressure that bore down on Zane. Under Albert's piercing gaze, Zane felt as if his very spirit was being torn apart. The pain was excruciating, and he could feel his senses slipping away. Is this the power of the expert level practitioner? One glance and I'm at death's door. I was confident I could handle anyone at the first level, the advanced level. But this, this is beyond anything I've faced before. That's enough. We're here for peace negotiations, Albert. Do you want to start another war? Or perhaps you'd prefer your precious son to remain locked in our cage, suffering? Hmm. Have it your way. We'll proceed as agreed. <gasps> Albert's gaze, still filled with murderous intent, locked onto Zane. If you value your life, Zane, run as far as you can once these talks are over. Otherwise, you'll die by my hand. Who does Albert think he is? Looking down on us like that? Some attitude for peace talks. Shh, keep it down. He's expert level for heaven's sake. We're just small fry here. Besides, it's not like you're the one he wants dead. The atmosphere in the hall grew thick with tension as Zane's companions exchanged worried glances, realizing the gravity of his situation. Suddenly, Madame Tina rose, her face a mask of indifference as she surveyed the crowd. Where's Kai? Why hasn't my son returned yet? Madame Tina's eyes narrowed as she focused on Elora, a sense of foreboding clear in her voice. Elora, where is he? Tell me. Elora lowered her head, remaining silent, which only served to fuel Madame Tina's anger. If I may, senior, I saw Zane kill Kai in the Sky Shadow secret land. <gasps> he's got guts. Killing Madame Tina's son, he's done for. Two expert level masters gunning for him now. Even the heavens can't save him. A horrifying, suffocating wave of energy erupted from Madame Tina. A dark shadow seemed to engulf her, transforming her appearance into something almost ghostly. What did you say? Kai, my son, was killed by Zane? Zane, you bastard! You'll die a thousand deaths for this. 
I will make sure you don't walk out of here alive. Her eyes blazed with fury, her gray hair wild and unkempt. Consumed by grief and rage, she leaped forward, hurling her horsetail whisk at Zane with deadly intent. Zane, trapped by the overwhelming killing intent, prepared to use his wind serpent step to escape. But before he could move, Elora stepped in front of him. Master, you promised. You swore you wouldn't attack Zane no matter what, as long as I agreed to your request. Does your word mean nothing? Fuck those promises. He killed my son. I'll flay him alive and rip out his soul. Get out of my way. 